preseason football practice began at Harvard, the coaching staff knew they had a young team at many positions. Most experts predicted a second or third place finish in the Ivy League. But there is a deep-seated pride and determination embedded in each young man who wears the crimson. The road through the Ivy League would not be without hurdles, and the youth would have to mature quickly. Meeting the challenge would be the goal of this 140th Harvard football squad as they set out on a quest for a championship. It would be one of the longest trips any Harvard football team had ever made from Cambridge, Massachusetts to San Diego, California. And when the Crimson suited up for their first game on the West Coast since 1949, they unveiled a junior quarterback who had thrown only 24 passes in all of 2012 and a sophomore running back who had less than 30 carries a year ago. But it was the defense that set off the fireworks for a new season. From the 34, Mills at the far hash. Ferguson as a protector. Mills got some time. Mills' time is disappearing. He now loses the football. It's on the ground, and it is scooped up at the 40, 35, 30, 25, 20, 10. Touchdown, Crimson. A returning all-Ivy defensive end from Atlanta, Georgia, Hodges was named Ivy League co-defensive player of the week. What followed was a coming out party for Harvard's young skill position players. Sophomore running back Paul Stanton Jr. averaged more than 10 yards a carry, one of them a touchdown. Making his first start, junior quarterback Connor Hempel plundered the San Diego secondary for 345 yards and four touchdowns. From the gun, everybody out in the pattern. It's going to go end zone, touchdown, Clemson. Andrew Fisher, third and 10. Berg to the left, Fisher to the right. Stanton stays in to protect. Look over the middle, complete. Touchdown, Ben Broderick. Fisher's day was not complete as the 5'9 receiver from Diamond Bar, California blew through multiple defenders for more points. With that quartet of touchdown tosses, Hempel earned Ivy League Co-Offensive Player of the Week honors. After setting a league record in 2012, averaging nearly 40 points a game, the young offense didn't miss a beat scoring 42 in their opening try. Completing the more than 6,000 mile round trip was particularly satisfying for a Crimson squad that has 12 players on its roster from the state of California. Against Brown, trailing by 13 points in the first period proved no problem for this explosive Harvard squad. Crimson players simply looked each other in the eye and said, let's get it back. And then they went to work. They're going to flare it out to Spoonie at the 25, but the Crimson come out, the ball is loose, and the Crimson have it. They bring the beef, the heavy look on first and goal from the one. Stanton's going to bounce it to the end zone for the touchdown. Or oh, Coke is to the left, he's out the pattern. Throw over the middle, is tipped and it's picked off. At the 40, 35, 30, Jaron Wilson, 25, 20, cuts back, cuts back outside of the 10 to the 5, leaps into the end zone for the touchdown. When the senior from Carmichael, California raced in for six, the Crimson was in the process of scoring four unanswered touchdowns in the second period alone. The blistering comeback culminated with Stanton scrambling for 15 of his game-high 91 yards. In just eight torrid minutes, Harvard had not only erased Brown's lead, but doomed any hopes the visitors had of an upset. In his second career start, Connor Hempel from Union, Kentucky, threw for just under 300 yards, including a 63-yard picture-perfect toss to Ricky Zorn. Seven in the box here, third down. Hempel got a hot receiver, got Zorn at the 40. 35-30, 25-20, 15-10-5, touchdown Ricky Zorn! In front of a national TV audience, the Crimson kept Brown off balance all night. Eight times the Bears were smothered behind the line, and Zach Hodges took home Ivy League Defensive Player of the Week honors for a second consecutive week. With a 41-23 opening Ivy League victory, Harvard continued its special team success, 
as David Moltander nailed two 36-yard field goals and five PATs. The senior from San Juan Capistrano, California, was named Ivy League Special Teams Player of the Week, and the Crimson put away their 13th consecutive opening home triumph under coach Tim Murphy. In 140 years of Harvard football, no game has been longer. Three overtimes, 76 combined points, 11 touchdowns, more than 800 total yards. A trip to in-state rival Holy Cross was not for the faint of heart. As throughout the young season, the D and the O fed off each other to spark the assault. Back to pass now out of the gun, and Pujols is fumbling the fumble the football at the 36-yard line. Obukwelu was able to knock it away, and uh, the recovery by Zach Hodges. Who else? Just the look with two wide to the right. Hand off straight ahead. Stand, stand to the end zone for the touchdown. Deadlock 7-7 in the third period. Harvard's attack defense stepped up with its third touchdown in as many games. Sophomore linebacker Eric Meads from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, jumped on the Crusader miscue and scored his second fumble recovery touchdown against Holy Cross in two years. The Crusaders battled back and the Crimson found themselves needing a touchdown to tie with just under two and one half minutes to play. The end zone, 84 yards away. There is, however, no give up in this Harvard team. Connor Hempel clicked on four clutch passes. The final coming with 38 seconds showing on the clock. Hempel's gonna fake. Hempel's looking end zone. Hempel fires it and it is caught for the touchdown. Cam Brink. Tie game, overtime. When Harvard took possession, they had to match a Crusader touchdown. They did with a bullet to senior tight end Tyler Ott from Tulsa, Oklahoma. Second overtime, game still tied. It had to end sometime, and it did, when Hempel handed the pigskin to his sophomore tailback from Kenner, Louisiana. Here's Stanton, Stanton to the 10, Stanton to the 5, Stanton to the end zone! Touchdown, Clemson! The thriller gave Harvard its first overtime victory since 2005 and launched the Crimson to a 3-0 start for this 2013 season. Cornell, a new starting quarterback, a 75-year rivalry, and a fourth straight victory. The Crimson took their high-scoring attack to Ithaca, where Cornell fell victim to the first starting assignment at quarterback for Michael Pruneau. The senior from Plano, Texas, replacing an injured Connor Hempel, threw for 340 yards, connected with nine different receivers. His longest, a 36-yard bomb. Pruneau looking in his direction, now glances back right, throws, has a man down the field, complete touchdown, Crimson! Pruneau's splendid afternoon was not complete. In the closing minutes, he paired with tight end Cameron Brait for an over-the-shoulder grab, and the Crimson had tallied 34 points. It was up to the defense to make those points stand up. They did not disappoint powered by a combined 545 pounds of Obukwelu brothers, the Crimson recorded a total of six sacks, two each for the hard-charging pair from Brockton, Massachusetts. On the ground, Cornell could not penetrate the Harvard forward wall, finishing with minus 15 yards rushing. With the 34-24 triumph, the Crimson gained a spot among the top 25 of the football championship subdivision rankings. So proud of you. This is one we'll never forget. It wasn't pretty, but it never is. Okay, against the good teams, against the best teams, it doesn't matter how pretty it is. It matters that when it's absolutely on the line, you guys got it done. So proud of you. One, two, three, ten thousand men of Harvard gave victory today.
For the second consecutive season, the Crimson opened their schedule 5-0. With a 35-16 pounding of Lafayette, they captured their 15th straight victory at Harvard Stadium. That's the third longest streak in Division I. It was a day both the pass and the run kept the visitors wondering. How do you stop an attack that is too hot to cool down? And a fake, Bruno steps back and throws, touchdown, Crimson. Bruno takes the snap, hand off to Stanton. Stanton drives his way forward and in for the touchdown, Crimson. Bruno steps up again, he's got Fisher wide open at the 30. 25, 20, 15, 10. Goodbye, Andrew Fisher to the end zone, touchdown, Crimson. When Cameron Brait from Naperville, Illinois, tacked on his second scoring catch of the game, the Crimson had safely put this one away. As throughout the season, big plays were not limited strictly to the offense. A fake underneath, a look and a throw, and it is intercepted by D.J. Monroe. Along with the pick by the senior from Columbia, South Carolina, Harvard gained additional ball-stealing antics from Chris Pointer and Connor Sheehan. For the Crimson defense, that was nine interceptions after five games. The Crimson had successfully completed a three-game sweep of their non-Ivy opponents. Up next, five dangerous battles with longtime rivals from the Ancient Eight. Against Princeton, Connor Hempel threw four touchdowns. He'll fake the handoff. He's looking right, has a man. Zorn behind the coverage, underthrown. A bobbling catch, touchdown! Shotgun snap, he's got room. He throws it over the middle. Leaping grab on, touchdown, Crimson! Throws complete, on in the end zone, touchdown, Crimson! And place kicker Andrew Flesher from Little Rock, Arkansas, earned Ivy League Special Teams Player of the Week. But the Crimson fell to the Tigers by three points in triple overtime. Up next, Dartmouth visited Cambridge as the three-game homestand concluded. This 117th meeting of these ancient eight rivals turned into a struggle not decided until the final seconds. Leading 7-0, the Crimson turned to their defense to shut down an early Dartmouth drive. Fakes the handoff, throws deflected, and it's intercepted. DJ Monroe and the Crimson are in business again. The battle of big plays continued as Paul Stanton Jr. reversed his path and exploded for 63 yards, his career longest run. Monroe's pick and Stanton's dash both led to field goals. And the drama was just beginning. It was time to test the big green deep, and the Crimson coaching staff made just the right call. Hands off to Stanton, they're gonna do a reverse again at Zorn. He's setting up the throw, looks downfield, has a man, Berg in the end zone, touchdown Crimson! A former high school quarterback from Dallas, Texas, Zorn showed he could still launch a bomb when needed. The next key decision covered only three yards, but Connor Hempel's toss to Tyler Hamblin added what would be a very important two-point conversion. Final minutes, game tied at 21. Fourth and three for Dartmouth. Junior tackle Ryan Delisle from Lynn Mass ripped through for the sack, giving the Crimson a chance to break the deadlock. Eight on the play clock, good snap, good hold, kick is up and it is good inside the left upright. After Flesher's third and most important field goal of the game, Dartmouth still had 48 seconds. But Harvard's Jaron Wilson from Carmichael, California made sure there was no big green comeback. For the second week in a row, Flesher earned Ivy League Special Teams Player of the Week honors. With the tense 24-21 victory, the Crimson clinched their 12th consecutive winning season and have now played 67 games without dropping two in a row. With a 34-0 shutout of Columbia, the Crimson extended their Ivy League record to 13 consecutive seasons, winning seven or more games. Working behind an offensive line led by junior Nick Easton of Lenore, North Carolina, and senior Austin Sheffley from Lafayette, Colorado, Harvard stung Columbia for 438 yards total offense.
on defense, the Crimson did the roaring, taming the Lions without giving up a point. So tight was the Harvard defense that Columbia advanced inside the Crimson 30 only once the entire game. For Harvard, their season narrowed down to a classic climax, a battle with defending Ivy League champion Penn and the annual renewal of the game, a trip to Yale. The Crimson honored 36 seniors prior to their final home game, and their goodbye to Harvard Stadium turned into a wild 38-30 triumph over the Penn Quakers. It was a game that saw quarterback Connor Hempel lead all runners with 65 yards rushing, including a touchdown when he bowled through defenders like a fullback. The 6'3 junior's arm was just as effective, hitting 21 of 25 passes that were spread among eight different receivers. Hempel looking, Hempel looking, end zone, has got Cam break for the touchdown. Hempel's going to fake, Hempel's going to throw to the end zone, Drop it. and touchdown Crimson. For Halverson, a freshman from Coronado, California, it was his first catch wearing Crimson. Two scores were added by Paul Stanton Jr. as Harvard approached nearly 400 yards of total offense. What may have been a second-half touchdown saving play saw sophomore Asante Gibson overtake Penn's kick returner and rip the ball out of his possession. It was an all-out effort that resulted in a turnover and kept the Quakers out of the end zone. Crimson captain Josh Boyd, a senior from Hyde Park, Massachusetts, was honored as Ivy League co-defensive player of the week for eight tackles, an interception, and a game-saving play. Three wide to the right. Becker is looking to the right. Becker throws. It's tipped in the air. Ball game. And incomplete. Crimson and live. the Crimson hang on. With the victory, viewed nationally on the NBC Sports Network, the seniors will leave with a four-year 19-2 record in games played at Harvard Stadium. The time has arrived. Yale awaits a rivalry that drifts back some 130 years. The one game each player carries with him for a lifetime. Records are forgotten. It's simply tee it up and battle till the final second expires. And all this happens under the biggest spotlight of them all. That's why it's called the game. Right from the start, Tim Murphy's squad sees control. Shocking Yale with a 72-yard crimson drive on their first possession. And a handoff now to Stan. Stan to the 20, the 15, the 10. Stan to the 5. Stan in for the touchdown. The versatile sophomore running back was setting the stage for a career afternoon. Harvard's next drive was again culminated by Stan as a receiver and runner. Hempel's going to throw a screen. Complete to the 15, the 10. Stan to the 5. Stan to the end zone for his second touchdown of the afternoon. On their third possession, Stanton again grabbed the screen pass. Followed blocks by Nick Easton and Austin Sheffley for the 18-yard score. Minutes later, Stanton tied the Harvard record for touchdowns in the Yale game with his fourth six-pointer. The Crimson blasted out 28 first-half points, while Yale could not penetrate the Harvard 20 the entire first 30 minutes. Coach Murphy has gotten this program to the point where it's one of the best in all of college football, just so consistent. Harvard's defense continued to dominate in a game that was never in doubt. Out of the gun, back to pass, pump faking, now he's in trouble, and he is going to get dropped and loses the football. There's a scramble at the 40-yard line. Everybody out in the pattern. Furman looking, and it's thrown, and it's intercepted by Chris Splinter. Splinter to the 40. Splinter to midfield. Splinter down the sideline to the Harvard side of the field where he will be <laughs> surrounded in celebration. Senior Dave Multander finished the scoring with a 48-yard field goal, a crimson record for the Yale game. When the 130th Harvard-Yale contest was complete, the 34-7 victory, coupled with a Princeton loss, earned the Crimson a share of the coveted Ivy League crown. This young team had impressively answered its season-long challenge. For his four-touchdown performance, Stanton was named Ivy League Co-Offensive Player of the Week. The win marked the seventh consecutive triumph over Yale, the longest streak in the game's history. Even more impressive 
It was Harvard's 12th defeat of Yale in the last 13 seasons. More than 50,000 fans and a national TV audience had watched Harvard seniors remain undefeated in the game. Outscoring the Bulldogs 149 to 59 during the last four years. For the season, Harvard finished at 9-1, winning their 15th Ivy League crown. As a team, they scored at least 30 points in all but one game and finished in the top 10 in the nation in points per game. On defense, they were number one in turnovers with 17 fumble recoveries and 14 interceptions. Their kicking game excelled as the Crimson was tops in field goals with 14 and one of only two Ivy teams with a perfect record on points after touchdowns. Seven players were named first team All-Ivy. A repeat selection, senior tight end Cameron Brait finished his career fourth in Harvard history with 18 touchdown catches. Also a repeat All-Ivy selection, senior linebacker Joshua Boyd, the Crimson captain during 2013, finished his career with more than 200 tackles. Junior defensive end Zach Hodges led the ancient eight in sacks and was second in tackles for a loss. Also a repeat All-Ivy choice, Hodges was named Harvard's most valuable player for the season. Junior offensive lineman Nick Easton played both guard and center for an offense that established a school record 67% passing completion rate. Senior defensive tackle Nambi Obakwelu graduates with 20.5 tackles for a loss and 8.5 sacks for his career. Senior defensive back Brian Awusu from Oxnard, California led his graduating class with 113 career tackles. Rounding out first team honors is junior defensive back Norman Hayes from Tucker, Georgia, who was elected Harvard's 141st captain for the 2014 season. Six Harvard players were named to the second team and two to honorable mention. These young men were proud of their accomplishments as they put Harvard in the record book. The Crimson became the first ancient eight team in history to win 250 Ivy League games. 2013 will be remembered as the season the Crimson set their sights on an Ivy League crown and with desire, determination and hard work, they battled their way to the top. They played with Harvard pride. They achieved their quest for a championship.